I didn't want another sibling after my brother. So there's that feeling of being a first born. You want all your siblings to grow up very quick and fast so that they can be independent and they don't have to follow you around. Hi, my name is Wanji and I'm the co-founder of Gilda Wazo Foundation. In March, we usually celebrate World Down Syndrome Day on 21st. I would like to take this period to share my story as a sibling and a caregiver to a sister who lived with Down Syndrome until she was eight months. I think my story starts when I was 14, around June, when my mother came for a visiting day when I was in class 8. From the corner of my eyes, I realized that my mom was expectant and I just gave her that stare off and she noticed and then she asked me what's the problem but I was just like nothing and I brushed it off never to speak about it again and then in August when I went home for the holidays I found that we had a newborn she had just been born a month ago so there was the excitement and also the feeling of man I'm 14 I didn't want another sibling after my brother. So there's that feeling of being a firstborn. You want all your siblings to grow up very quick and fast so that they can be independent and they don't have to follow you around. Then now we had a, a younger sister. Anyway, I overcame the feeling and she ended up being like a darling. I really, really loved her. But my mom noticed that my sister was sleeping too much. And I kept hearing her saying she's sleeping too much, she's not breastfeeding, and what do you want a young baby to be doing? They should be sleeping, right? But also then I started noticing that there was a wedge between my sister's toes and my mom was using a thread to try to just match the two toes. Like she was trying to make sure that the bones would fuse back together. I still remember the color of that thread, it was lime green. Although there was nothing much to write home about during the August holidays, I noticed that the hospital visits had increased. We had uh, to go to a cardiologist and we had to go for gut checkups because my sister was really suffering from constipation. And that DIY hack that parents usually have, where you put stove in the bum of the kid to soften the stool, wasn't working for my sister. So every time she suckled, we had to go for hospital to get soft stool softeners. Yeah. At this point, I haven't known that my sister has Down syndrome. Because I think in hindsight, like much later is when my mother would tell me that the first time they knew my sister had Down syndrome was immediately after my sister was born. And my mom gets discharged from hospital. And now it's time for my dad to take the papers for hospital to get paternity and maternity leave or something like that. The person we found at TSA pulled my dad aside and asked him, do you know what is happening to your child? Do you know what's wrong with your child? My dad said no. So that is the person who explained to my father in detail what was happening to my sister and what having Down syndrome meant as well as the implication. So then my dad would come and explain to my mom. Because then we had had a, we also had a discussion with my mom where I asked her if she knew anything was wrong with my sister or she it just caught her by surprise that my sister had Down syndrome. Well, she'd tell me that uh, my sister was born through CS and my mom says that she had a very bad headache. So she'd noticed that the neck of my sister was red and swollen-ish. And then she was like, maybe she got a bruise when she was being born. It will go away and it will subside. It never did. But also when the doctors came in to check on my mom, they told her that they want to speak with her concerning my sister. They never did. So for my mom, because of how she was struggling with the migraines that were really, really bad, she didn't take she didn't take heed of that. Now, that would come to make sense for my mom much later after they had had that discussion about what the TSC person had said. Remember, I had mentioned that my mom was using a thread to tie my sister's toes so that she can see if she can fuse the bone. That was an indicator of Down syndrome. The red neck here and how it was swollen was another indicator for Down syndrome. But we didn't have, nobody had the information, my mom didn't, and it was really hard. It became tough for them to diagnose Down syndrome until the TSC person assisted them with diagnosing. So 
at that point also the lifestyle changes really started because remember my parents also were having insurance but it covers up to a certain extent and we are here we are trying to get cardiovascular services we're trying to go for physiotherapy she's having recurring pneumonia you're planning um, surgery. It meant that even though the insurance of my mom and dad combined could not cater for some services because some services come as are not considered and are not added onto the insurance. It means you have to go back to your pocket. <laughs> what that means is we had the most drastic change I think I remember for me was uh, having two house helps and then now we have one. I think it was so loud because it would also lead to me being a caregiver to my sister in university when my mom went to class. So watch out for part two and I look forward to seeing you.